questions. Welcome back to BCPS TV presents Math 6, week of May 25th, and I'm your host, Miss Barr. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick reminder about myself, especially if this is your first week tuning in. I'm a secondary mathematics resource teacher, and on your screen you'll find a picture of my husband, Scott, my two bonus sons, Bruce and Charlie, and our youngest, three-and-a-half-year-old, Kevin. So what will we learn this week? This week, we are beginning Unit 7, a focus on the statistics standards in Grade 6, our last unit of the year. Our first objective is that we are going to be able to recognize and find that measures of center for our numerical data set summarizes all of its values with a single number. Additionally, a measure of variation can describe how its values vary from a single number. I understand that that's a lot of information in a bullet. However, I want you to focus on the phrases that are underlined, measures of center and measure of variation. Our second standard and objective is that we will be able to display and summarize numerical data on box plots. Let's get started. Okay, friends, let's get our brains moving and grooving this week and starting with our think about it. The kittens in a room at the animal shelter are arranged in five crates as shown on your screen. What do you notice and wonder about those images? I'll give you a moment to think about that. This week, I asked my bonus son, Charlie, his response, and here's what he had to say. I notice that there is a room Plenty of cats. There's zero cats. There should be more cats in that room. <laughs> I don't care how many. There should at least be one. Okay. But then what I notice, I mean wonder, okay. is that um, there are, why are there so many cats in one room? Like, there are enough rooms to distribute all those cats equally. Wow, that's some great vocabulary you used. We're going to learn and investigate how to distribute those cats equally so they're not so crammed in there. So stay tuned. Measures of center. A measure of center is a single number used to describe a set of numerical data. A measure of center describes a typical value from a data set. We're going to focus on two measures of center today. The first is a vocabulary term called mean. You may have heard of this before. A synonym for the word mean is average. The second is median. Again, this may sound familiar, and a synonym for the word median is the middle. Let's continue to investigate. So what is the definition for the mean? The mean is the sum of the items in a set of data divided by the number of items in that set of data, also called the average. Let's take a look at a visual. Now let's take a look at a visual representation of what the mean actually means. Let's recall the cats in a crate from our think about it. Remember, my bonus son, Charlie, was questioning why there are so many cats in crate three and none in crate five. And one of the things he had mentioned was how to distribute them evenly. Well, I want you to think about that for a moment. How could I distribute those cats evenly? First, let's count up how many cats there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10 cats in total, and there are five crates. So I am going to take some cats from crate three and begin to distribute them out to the places where there were no cats. Hey, would you look at that? All of my crates have the same number of cats. I took 10 cats and divided them evenly into five crates, which meant the average cat per crate would be two cats. Great job.
Let's try and find the average. The heights in meters of the trees in a park are as follows. 7, 11, 9, 7, 6, and 8. The first step is to find the sum of all of the numbers. Sum means to add. On your screen, you will see that I have added 7 plus 11 plus 9 plus 7 plus 6 plus 8. And together, the sum is 48. The second step is to determine the total number of data points in the set. If I counted those up, you would see that there are six data points. In this case, it would be six trees in the park. The last step would be to divide the sum by the total number of data points in the set. So we have 48 divided by six, which equals eight. Eight meters. The average height in the, of the trees in the park is eight meters tall. Now let's look at the definition of the median. The median is the middle number or the average of the two middle numbers in an ordered set of data. Look at the image on the screen. The median is the center partition that separates the opposing roadways. This may be more familiar, but it's a great visual to try and remember that the median is the middle number. Let's find the median. The heights and meters of the trees in a park are as follows. 7, 11, 9, 7, 6, and 8. In order to find the median, we're first going to order our numbers from least to greatest. You will see that on your screen, I have taken the data points given and placed them in order starting with 6 all the way up to 11. Next, we are going to cross out the data points starting at the end and work our way in to find the number that's directly in the middle of the set of data. Follow along as I cross out 6 and 11 at the same time, then 7 and 9, and you'll notice that I'm left with two numbers stuck in the middle. Well, I could think to myself, what is in the middle, exactly in the middle of 7 and 8? Or I can find the average of those two numbers by adding them up and dividing by two. Either way, you will find that the median of heights of the trees in the park is 7.5 meters. Now we're going to look at the measure of variability. A measure of variability is also a single number used to describe the spread of a data set. It's also called a measure of spread. We're going to investigate the mean absolute deviation. So what is mean absolute deviation? Independently, I'm sure you have heard of these words, but when I bring them together and try to relate them to mathematics, what does that represent? Well, the mean absolute deviation is the mean distance between each data point and the mean of the data set. Let's take a look at what that would look like. Now let's find the mean absolute deviation. The data represents the height in feet of various buildings. Find the mean absolute deviation for the data set and the numbers are provided on your screen. First, we're going to find the mean. In order to do that, let's reflect back on how to find the mean. We're going to add up all of our numbers and divide by how many numbers were in our set. When I add up all of my numbers, I got 600, and I counted that there were 10 numbers in my data set. So 600 divided by 10 gave me 60, highlighted in red. That is the average or mean of the heights of the various buildings. Now the second step is to use a table and find the absolute distance of each data point from the mean. Here's the table that was created. You'll see the labels are the height and then the distance from the mean. If the height was 69, what is the difference from the mean? It would be nine. If the height was 58, What's the difference from 60? It would be two. 
And whether the numbers were positive or negative in either direction, if the height was larger or smaller than the mean, we're taking the absolute value of that. So you can see at the table, I, I created the distance from the mean for all of the heights. The third step is to find the mean of those new values. Those new values are right here. So nine, two, six, four. And again, there's still only 10 data points. So when I add all those up and divide by 10, I get four and six tenths. Therefore, the mean absolute deviation or the variation here in height and feet of these various buildings is four and six tenths feet. So now that we understand what mean, median, and mean absolute deviation is, and we've worked a few problems together, it's your turn to show what you know. Okay, friends, we are now moving into the second part of our lesson for this week, and we're going to begin with a think about it. Look at the image below about time spent reading last night in Mr. Jacobs' class. What do you notice and wonder? I'll give you a moment to think about it. I asked my bonus son, Bruce, his response, and here is how our conversation went. Okay, Bruce, so what do you notice about this display? I noticed that... It ranges from 70 to 25. Okay, thank you. And what do you wonder? Are the numbers on the bottom minutes or hours? I don't know the answer to that. But the image on your screen is a box plot, and we are going to investigate that further. So follow along. The next part of our lesson focuses on box plots. Box plots is a graph that shows how data are distributed by using the median, quartiles, least value, and greatest value, also called a box and whisker plot. If you look to the image on the right, you will see an example of what that plot would look like. Remember, our outcome was that we will be able to display and summarize numerical data on box plots. First, we're going to focus on how to display our information on a box plot. In order to make a box plot, first find the five values for the data set. This is also known as a five number summary. Those values are the least value, also known as the minimum, the lower quartile, Q1, which is the median of the lower half of data, the median, which we discussed earlier, was the middle, the upper quartile, also known as Q3, which is the median of the upper half of the data, and the greatest value, also known as the maximum. This image was listed on the definition, and it highlights the five number summary. I'll give you a moment to take a look. Now let's try and create our own box plot. The heights of several students are shown. Make a box plot for the data. First, we're going to place the numbers in order from least to greatest and then find the values that are needed. Remember, that's the five number summary. So first we put the numbers in order from least to greatest. Then we find the minimum value, which is 54. The maximum value, which is 65. And the median, which is the number directly in the middle. And in this case, after I cross them out from left to right, I end up with a number in between 59 and 60. Therefore, the median is 59.5 or 59 and a half. Next, we're going to find the first quartile, which is the median of the lower half of the data. In this case, I'm looking between 54 and 59, and the number that's directly in the middle is in between 56 and 58. Therefore, the first quartile is 57. Now I'm going to find the third quartile. So I'm going to focus on the numbers 60 to 65. The third quartile is directly in the middle of 61 and 62, which is 61 and a half. Now that I have the five number summary, we are going to plot those points to create our box plot. Here is the number line I'm going to use. 
you'll notice I start at 54 with increments of one all the way up to 65, and I have the height labeled in inches. We're first gonna plot the minimum value, which is 54, then the Q1, which was 57, then the median, which is 59 and a half, then the third quartile, which is 61 and a half, and lastly, the maximum, which is 65. Remember that another word for box plot was called a box and whisker. So when we're creating it, we're going to keep that in mind. We're first going to create our whiskers by connecting the minimum and the first quartile and connecting the third quartile and the maximum. Then we're going to create our box with the other values that are the 50% in the middle, just like that. And that is how you create a box plot. If you recall, our part of our outcome was to summarize information from a box plot. We can also refer to this as the variability. There are two key ways to describe the variability in a box plot. The first being the range. In statistics, the difference between the greatest and the least values in a data set is known as the range. And you might remember in the Think About It, my stepson Bruce said that the numbers ranged from a certain value to another. We're gonna refer back to that. The second vocabulary term we're going to focus on is the interquartile range, or the IQR. This is the difference of the third and the first quartiles in a data set. This represents the middle half of the data. So let's give range a try. The data set shows the ages of the players on a professional baseball team. I'd prefer the Orioles. Find the range of the set of data. The ages are given listed below, starting with 36, ending in 29. In order to find the range, we first have to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. This will only help us in the long run. So on your screen, you'll see I have ordered the numbers from least to greatest. Now recall that range is the greatest value minus the lowest value. The greatest number or age of the players was 39 and the youngest was 24. When I subtract those two values, 39 minus 24, I'm given 15. Therefore, the range of the player's age is 15 years. Now let's find the range in a box plot. If you can recall our image from the Think About It, it was a box plot and it talked about time spent reading last night in Mr. Jacobs' class. In order to find the range, we must first find the largest value and the smallest value, which we can clearly see on our box plot. The largest value is the number all the way to the right with a dot indicating 70, and the smallest value is all the way to the left with the dot indicating 25. In order to find the range, we're going to subtract those two values. 70 take away 25 is 45. Therefore, the time spent reading ranges 45 minutes. And I put minutes in parentheses because if you can recall from the think about it, we were unsure as to whether it was hours or minutes, but does it make sense that someone spent 45 hours reading in one night? No, there aren't even that many hours in a day. So we're going to assume it's minutes. Now let's discuss variability in box plots by finding the IQR. The box plots compare the ages of dancers in two different dance troupes. Find the IQR for each set. First, let's look at group A. It is the green box plot. In order to find the IQR, we are going to subtract the upper quartile by the lower quartile. The red arrows point to the first and third quartiles of group A. You'll notice that the first quartile is 20, and the third quartile is 24. When I subtract them, I get four. Now let's look at group B. We're going to find the IQR the same way, subtracting the upper and lower quartiles. The red arrows indicate group B at first quartile as 21 and a half, 
and the third quartile is 26. When you subtract them, you get 4.5, or 4.5. What this tells us is that group B has a larger IQR, and therefore its middle 50% of the data is more spread out than group A. Great job so far. Now it's your turn to show what you know about box plots, range, and interquartile range. Good luck! Let's reflect on what we did learn this week. Our first outcome was being able to recognize and find that measures of center for a numerical data set summarize all its values with a single number while a measure of variation describes how it varies with a single number. Remember that measures of center were mean and median, and measure of variation, we focused on mean absolute deviation, range, and the interquartile range. The second objective that we learned was being able to display and summarize numerical data on a box plot. Remember, box plot has a five number summary, the minimum value, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum value. Well, friends, that's it for Math 6 on BCPS TV for this week. Remember, if you have any questions about this week's lessons, please reach out to your teachers. And as always, take care and stay healthy.